Okay, so I want ice for my nether highways. Now usually the best solution is just to go to a glacier and mine the ice there, because there's a ridiculous amount of blue ice in those things, and even, even a single glacier will have you set for basically every highway you'll ever need to build. So the problem is, our server has a world border, and I'm pretty sure it's mostly warm biomes in the world border. I checked, there's probably no glaciers in the world border. I did find some packed ice on a mountain, but like, the ice up there is so integral to the mountain shape, and it kind of ruins the landscape if you lop off the top of a mountain versus just removing a glacier. So I felt kind of bad taking the ice from there. So forget about naturally generated ice. You know how you can really inefficiently get infinite amounts of ice? That's right, it's time to build an ice farm. Now, some things I notice about manual ice farms. First, they freeze from the outside in. This is really cool because it mimics how ponds freeze IRL. But, it means that the water blocks in the center spend a lot of time actually being unable to freeze until the perimeter ice reaches it. But also, this ice that just got generated and is sitting there, it's just taking up space until you harvest it. And that space could be used for more water to generate more ice. This might not be much of a hit to efficiency if you like stay around and camp the farm, but that's just not my playstyle. I want to do other things while hopefully a bigger load of ice generates. You could make these more effective by just making them bigger, but this leads into my second issue with manual ice farms. They're big and flat. This is because ice needs sky exposure and cold biomes to generate. So that means you can't stack ice farms on top of each other. The only way to generate a large amount of ice would be to make a big and flat pool of water. The only cold biomes we have on the server are all up in the mountains, and putting a big flat roofless pool thing up there... I don't know, I don't think I have the skills to make that look very good. So I thought, could I make a farm that detects when ice forms? and then pushes all the ice it generates into a big cube? Because that solves both problems, it takes up less horizontal space for more ice, and also constantly moves ice out of the way so water can come in and instantly be available to freeze again for more ice. Also, I think it's way more fun to tear through a whole cube of ice rather than just a single layer of ice that you also have to wade through water to mine. Anyway, with all that said, I'm actually not that great at redstone in practice. But I think this should be possible with like observers and pistons or something. So this is the design that I'll be going with. Um, it's sort of a modified version of a design by Odyssey on YouTube that no longer works. Uh, because his version was made for a snapshot of Minecraft where observers were first introduced and they work differently. But this version I've made does work. Uh, whenever ice generates right here, where these two water sources are flowing into each other and creating infinite water, it'll get pushed along the path. Uh, so when it reaches the end, the entire row of ice gets pushed up. So what I'm thinking is if I take this column, and I basically just copy it over a bunch, I should be able to make a really big ice cube. So immediately after figuring that out, I just went straight to building it in survival. I cleared out enough room to generate a 10 by 10 by 12 block of ice. It's not exactly a cube, but the way this thing is designed, if it were 12 blocks long, it would actually delete the water sources, and the farm would stop working after it generated a single layer of ice. Now, again, I'm still not great at redstone. You can see here I inevitably encountered a flaw in my design midway through building. That being, it's not actually really tileable. The honey blocks in the redstone actually need to be staggered, every other slice so they don't stick together and break the whole thing. I had to fix this on the other side too, but after I did that, luckily it just worked as intended, so great. For decoration, I didn't really think it through much, but I wanted a mostly open air structure to give the impression of the inside being exposed to the cold air from the outside. But I also did make a little shack to the side for AFKing and storage, it, it gives a hint of like human activity. Uh, another cool thing I did learn while decorating is that soul lanterns are actually perfect for lighting up an ice farm. Ice melts at light levels higher than 11, and since most other light sources tend to give off a light level higher than 11, it tends to turn the ice farm into a big watery mess. But soul lanterns and soul torches have a light level of 10, and they're both blue. So in addition to not ruining the ice farm, they actually fit in great with the whole theme of it. 
Alright, so it looks like the ice farm has finished generating the maximum amount of ice it can. So, uh... E <laughs> yeah, that's a cube, alright. Almost, almost a cube. It's taller. Wow, that's... this is cool. Oh yeah, I added, uh, added some observers up there, just to detect when the ice reaches the maximum... the maximum push limit. And once it does, it actually pushes out these blocks to block more ice from generating, because... Uh, if you don't do that, then... Yeah. I'm gonna just mine all this and see what we got. Alright, so... This is the amount of ice that we got from one harvest. That's pretty good, I'd say. Uh, let's craft it up into packed ice. Let's see how much we can get. A stack. Two stacks. And five more. It's not bad. Uh... <laughs> Let's see how much blue ice this makes. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, if you somehow find yourself in the same situation as me with no access to glaciers and in desperate need of any ice, no matter how slow, well, feel free to use my silly contraption. I'll put a world download to this in the description as well as the schematic for the Lightmatica users. Or just use this diagram, it's way easier that way. Okay, thank you, bye.